What's up, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It's time for a recap of Teen Mom 2 Season 9, Episode 10. The episode starts off with Brianna telling her producer that she wants to add Devon's last name to Nova's last name. She says that it's unfair that he's there for her as like a father figure, um, and she doesn't have his last name at all, whereas her other daughter, Stella, has her father Luis's last name like entirely yet Luis has never really been in the picture you know what I mean what I wondered there was kind of like huh typically people kind of like make the mistake of giving the child the father's last name without like the father really like being present and then correct themselves later so it's kind of strange that uh, Brianna kind of did the reverse like I wonder why she ever even gave Stella Luis's last name or Luis's last name sorry um, knowing that they were never really gonna make it like they split up before she gave birth and like they spent like half the pre pregnancy talking about giving her up for adoption so it was a bit weird but I digress. Now, moving right along, um, Barbara lands in New York City for her meeting with Jace's dad, Andrew, and calls Janelle to go over the plan from her hotel room. Barbara wants to know if there are any mental illnesses or ADHD, um, you know, that run in Andrew's side of the family, which is a bit interesting considering, like, her family, especially just, like, her three kids alone, kind of, like, have mental health problems, and I'm pretty sure, like, ADHD problems as well, so it's kind of like, you know, you can't really blame all that, you know, if Jace has any of that um, on Andrew's lineage because it's very present in your own, you know, like, okay. Over in Dover, Kale FaceTimes her friend to talk about how she's gonna throw a separate birthday party for Lincoln from his dad, Javi, and she reveals that Chris accidentally sent her a text message that was meant for his ex-girlfriend, um, which means that, like, he's been talking to his ex-girlfriend, quote unquote, behind Kale's back again. I say quote unquote because I'm pretty sure like there is no behind your back when I'm not even pretending to date you, right? Um, and she's like, I hope he's still coming to the party, but I don't understand why he would even be texting with his ex-girlfriend. I really do wonder how the heck Chris managed to explain that away because that must have been awkward as all hell. Kale continues on her merry way driving along when Chris's aunt texts her to let her know that Chris will in fact be coming to the birthday party, but it was quite weird considering they have each other's numbers and Chris is perfectly fine texting his ex-girlfriend yet when he wants to send a message to Kale it goes through his aunt like what does that tell you about the state of your relationship Kale meanwhile in South Dakota Aubrey spends the night at Adam's parents house and grandma Donna texts Chelsea telling her that Adam showed up so they need to go pick up Aubrey and so Cole shoots up like a bat out of hell out of the couch and goes to get Aubrey so we're back in Dover again where it's time for Lincoln's birthday party and Chris arrives with a big gift and hangs out with his son Lux, but ignores Kale completely. Oh my God, I don't even know what to say here anymore. We then take a break from the drama to head on over to Puerto Rico, where Brianna's family and Devon are all on vacation together. It's so cute and great to see like their relationship kind of evolve over time. I didn't follow them on Teen Mom 3, but like I saw the drama when they first came on over to Teen Mom 2. So it's nice to see their progression. So they're all on vacation together. Um, Devon goes and just skis with Brianna's sister Brittany while she watches with Nova and Stella um, or just with Stella something like that and then later they go and grab a lunch on the pier and um, Nova's grandmother Roxanne starts talking to Nova about like um, race and color and stuff she's like did you notice like how many people here in Puerto Rico look like you they're black they've got curly hair you know when people ask you what you are like what do you say you proudly tell them you're Afro Latina I was like yes like that is amazing to see here you don't get those kinds of conversations out of any of the other moms like for the obvious reasons um, so it, it's really great to kind of see how they're handling um, Nova being a multiracial you know girl now Barbara is off to lunch at the restaurant where she's supposed to be meeting up with Andrew and so he doesn't seem to show up like she sits around there for like an hour an hour and a half then she calls at like an hour and a half mark and she's like okay dude what's going on but she reaches his voicemail you know, which was kind of like concerning, like, is he gonna stand her up? She leaves a message saying that she traveled all the way to meet with him and that it's his loss and not hers. And so that producer that I absolutely cannot stand, I think her name is Kristen or something like that, or Kirsten, she comes up to Barb from where she's, like, you know, my camera where you guys are right now, the, it's a distance of like a meter, you know? So Kristen, comes out from behind the camera right in front of Barbara where she's been this whole entire time to know whether or not Andrew called her. She goes, 
Barbara, did Andrew call you back? Have you heard from him at all yet? I'm getting a little bit concerned. Time is like starting to really pass by here, Barbara. Down in West Virginia, Leah is at her boyfriend Jason's house without any of the girls present because they're all with their fathers. And the two of them talk about how Jeremy's been spending more time with Addie and they hope that it continues. Um, what's this guy's name again? Jason. Jason basically just counsels her on how it's up to Jeremy at this point to kind of maintain their relationship. And it's like, I don't know why this guy is always counseling his girlfriend like he is a therapist or a father or something like that. Like, I, I don't get it. Um, anyway, uh, back to down in South Dakota again. Cole returns home with Aubrey and Chelsea sends Aubrey downstairs to play so that she and Cole can kind of discuss what went down, you know, in the situation with Grandma Donna and Adam kind of just showing up. She wants to know how much contact Aubrey had with Adam, you know, at that point, maybe even Cole. Cole tells Chelsea that Grandma Donna was like, extremely ridiculous when he went to pick up Aubrey. She, he was like, okay, so when I went there, I was at the front door, like it was a full house of people, and Grandma Donna's like, I don't understand why she's gotta go, you know? Like, this is so weird. Like, we're having a good time here. And so Cole's like, it's court ordered that she cannot be here at the same time as Adam. You know that. She goes, oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was just a rule that you had with Chelsea. I had no clue. It's court ordered. And, you know, of course, they're extremely agitated by all of that because they know she's playing dumb. And it's especially frustrating because she's doing it in front of Aubrey and putting Aubrey in the middle of all of this. And so um, she decides to be a pain in the ass by being like, okay, well, since Aubrey's going to go because of this rule, when's the next time that I'm going to give a say Aubrey when are you gonna bring her back or when can I pick her up and Cole's like uh not anytime soon because you just broke the rule we gotta reevaluate on your ass right now sis um, so it, it was just a bit of a mess. She just keeps pushing like this false narrative that she has no clue why any of this is happening, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I don't know how this could have been avoided. And Aubrey, who unfortunately has been in the middle of this the whole entire time, she's kind of just standing there like, well, I know how this could have been avoided, you know? Um, me and my dad just not here at the same time. That could have avoided this. I could have been able to stay. And it's like, Take this L when a nine-year-old has more freaking common sense than you. Like, come on now. Well, again, we're back in New York City where that producer, Kristen or whatever her name is, is pretending to not know that Andrew called Barbara back. Of course, Barbara tells her no, and she's like, I never liked Andrew because he's a weirdo and an alcoholic, and Jace honestly doesn't need that kind of person in his life. And like, under my breath, I was like, yeah, because he's already got two people like that babysitting him right now. The last thing he needs is a freaking third in the mix, you know? And, and all of this is with Barbara's approval as well, mind you. So as they're trashing him, Andrew suddenly calls and scolds Barbara, saying, ma'am, I live in, saying, ma'am, I'm in Florida right now. My father has a limited amount of time to live because he's got stage three lung cancer. And he was just so extremely antagonistic and weird. Like, it obviously was not communicated to Barbara, so I don't understand why he was scolding her, where on the flip side, it was obviously communicated to him that she was gonna be in New York City at that time and at that place. So why would he not have kind of come forward with this information a lot sooner before she made the trip? So anyway, Barbara did a really good job of maintaining her cool in this situation. We all know Janelle would have absolutely like flipped her lid and cursed him out and been like, you know, F your dad, I don't care, you should have been here, blah, blah, blah. Like, I imagine that's how Janelle would be. So anyway, um, Barbara tells him that Jace is doing well, he's smart, and um, then she asks him the questions about his family with ADHD and mental illness, bipolar, and stuff like that. So Andrew puts his mom on the line to answer the questions, and um, she tells Barbara that no one in the family has ADHD or bipolar or anything like that, and I kind of started thinking, wait a second, so we already know that Jace kind of has ADHD. Like, I think we know that we've talked about his medication and all of that and I did say a couple seasons ago when it first came out that I was uncomfortable that we know this kind of information but you know that's a story for another day so now with this whole bipolar thing I don't know how young you can be diagnosed with bipolar I probably should have looked that up before I started making this video but like is Jace in the age range where he could be diagnosed with bipolar because you know like that's a really heavy diagnosis to have. And it's really sad to me that that's just plastered, um, you know, for all of us to kind of just listen to, you know? And it, he's at that age where pretty soon his friends are gonna be watching this show if they're not already secretly watching it behind his back and knowing all of this stuff. And like these kinds of things, ugh, 
It's sad. I feel bad for these kids. They are exploited like none other. Like, pray for these kids, y'all. Anyway, Andrew's mom claims that Andrew's done a complete 180 and that she thinks and that uh, she thinks about Jace often and wants to meet him in person one day. Okay, we saw Andrew in the episode prior to this one, and he still looked like a junkie. So. You know, I'm not quite sure how much we can trust his mother, okay? Um, and uh, hope, it seems like Barbara does want to have Jace at least meet his mother one day because she seems to be a stable person. Now, we're back in Dover again where Kale marches on up to Chris and tells him that it would have been nice if he could say hi to her. And he tells her to be nice for once and accuses her of trying to be nice just for the camera. Then he calls his auntie fake uh, because she's sitting around with Kale and not him. And Kale tells him that it takes one to know one, and she says that she thinks he's fake because he's faking a relationship with her but texting his ex-girlfriend. Again, I tell you, a man who's not texting you directly, like at the very least, is not faking a relationship with you. Like he's, he's making it so painfully clear that that's not what the two of you guys have, you know? Like it's just so hard and sad to watch her kind of like live in this delusional bubble where they're dating, you know? It's like, use your common sense. This guy cannot text you directly, but he can text his ex-girlfriend directly. You know, like, come on. So his aunt tells Kale that Chris genuinely likes her or loves her or whatever, but that she makes it difficult. And she claims that she doesn't make it difficult at all. But we all know that that's not true. Kale has been lying about this man for like, you know, over a year now. She's made all sorts of claims against him that, you know, are really damaging to, to his character, right? She's been assassinating his character for like well over a year now. So I can see why he's hesitant about her and why he thinks that she makes it difficult to want to be in a relationship with her. And it's just so sad to see her so upset at her son's birthday party. Meanwhile, the, the F boy in the background is jumping around on a trampoline, having the time of his life. Like the juxtaposition was like, jarring to me. Now, it's dinner time in Puerto Rico and Brianna brings up the last name situation, but Nova doesn't really say anything one way or the other. She instead demonstrates the bubbles that Devon makes in the water when he farts in the pool before getting scolded by Brianna. It was so freaking funny. Now, back to Kale Land again. She gets together with her friends after the party to recap the party drama, and she says that it's been three years and she and Chris uh, still keep going through hell and back, and she gets a text from Chris saying that he loves her where that's like the first time ever that i kind of see why she thinks he's sending mixed signals because to me it's always looked like the signals have been very clear like i'm not in a relationship with you but he texts her telling her that he loved her after treating her like s-h-i-t and i was like that's not fair dude look at like the the agony you're putting this poor woman through like just leave her alone you know if you're not going to treat someone right leave them the f alone that's my motto. So after hearing about this, her producer um, sits down with her and asks if that means that they're going to be getting back together. And Kale says that it really just depends on who asks either of them. They don't have a solid answer to that question. She says that she's tired of the back and forth and won't do it for another year. That's like her cutoff. And she's starting to feel really emotional and lonely because the rest of her mom friends are married. Back in New York City, Barbara calls Janelle to tell her Andrew never showed up to the meeting and claimed to be in Florida, and Janelle said it was BS because he knew for a long time about the visit. Now, um, Mary, Chelsea's mom Mary, is driving Aubrey around and asking if she had a fun time with the Lynns, and Aubrey says no because she had to leave early since Adam came. She says that she played a bit of ping pong with him while waiting for Cole to come and pick her up. The next day, Chelsea goes over to her mom's house, and her mom tells her what Aubrey told her, and um, Chelsea says that she feels like Donna has been pushing her buttons on purpose and that they're gonna have to take a break from the visits for a while. Her mom Mary says that she thinks that Cole should adopt Aubrey because if something happens to Chelsea, Aubrey would eventually end up with Adam's family potentially. And Chelsea says that she doesn't wanna push the issue with Aubrey. And then her mom's like, well, I asked her and she said that she'd be happy with it. And Chelsea was like pissed off about that, which of course, who wouldn't be? Um, and she's like, just let me handle it the way that you know I want to. I know what I'm doing. And like, you know, she's been telling me she's not comfortable with that. So I'm not gonna do it. And um, so there you have it, a recap of what went down on Teen Mom 2 season nine, episode 10. As usual, I'm more excited to hear what you have to say about everything, so please make sure to leave all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and we'll chat. You can also like this video, subscribe for more, feel free to share it with your friends as well, and follow me across social media where I absolutely love chatting with you. That's all for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.